Hey everyone, Horror Hardy here. Today I decided to rank every film in the Pokemon franchise. I have undergone the task of pitting every single one against each other in this ranking. Obviously spoilers are ahead so proceed with caution. All timestamps will be included so if there's a film you don't want spoiled, simply skip ahead to the next film in the lineup. For reference, I use a 5 point rating system. The thing about Pokemon films is that if you've seen one of them, you've pretty much seen all of them. They all follow the same plot points. Number 27. Pokemon the Movie. Kyurem vs. The Sword of Justice. 0.5 stars. I genuinely have nothing good to say about this film. Did they really name a Pokemon after a phone service provider? This sounds so much like a fan dub. It's the worst vo voice acting in any of these movies so far. It can't get worse than this. I was expecting them to say some wild shit at some point like in fan dubs posted on YouTube but it never came. This lot of legendaries are really lame. They might have been able to do something with a couple of them, but they gave the ones with any potential really shit or non-existent personalities. This one is so weird. Their mouths don't move when they talk, but they'll open their mouth to gasp and whatnot. Kelvio has water jets that shoot out of the bottom of his hooves. I just imagine that is uncomfortable. I think a better design choice would have been to put water cannons at the back of the ankle. This is bizarre. Why doesn't Kyurem know when to let a fight end? Number 26. Pokemon the Movie 2000. 0.5 stars. It was so cool seeing a dragon dance performed with Gyarados as a puppet. I like seeing Jesse with purple hair. These are the only two good things I can say about this movie. I really prefer Ash, Misty, and Brock as a friend group compared to what we got here. Misty, don't perpetuate the stereotype that a girlfriend will just do whatever you want when you want. Sending women back for real. This is a nothing film. Useless. There's definitely better Pokemon films you should be watching instead. Number 25. Pokemon the Moody, Genesect, and The Legend Awakened. 0.5 stars. I love the idea of a city amongst nature. Anything that preserves animal life is good in my book. Enough though. We don't need any more movies about Mewtwo. This is the last straw. Some annoying ass employee keeps suggesting films about me too and y'all say nothing? Come on now. I don't enjoy flashbacks to something that happened two minutes ago. Fuck this movie for showing N, my beloved, in the end credits and nowhere else. I envy the alternate universe where he starred in a movie instead of the movie they made here. Number 24. Pokemon the movie Mewtwo Strikes Back. Evolution. 0.5 stars. I like how Brock was more expressive with his movements, it really suits him. We got some extra scenes here which was nice, some positive changes, and some negative. And for the love of god, once again, we do not need any more Mewtwo stories. This thing has no reason to exist. I would have preferred more original Pokemon content, that's for sure. Why was Jesse holding on to a random ass frying pan? Those things are heavy. This whole situation is reminding me of when Studio Ghibli went 3D with Earwig and the Witch. That was obviously a downgrade because the 2D animation and art style was clearly stunning and beautiful to look at. There is simply zero competition when it comes to that. However, that's not as applicable here because the original art style of Pokemon isn't good. I suppose it has some charm to it and nostalgia factor, but that's kind of stretching it. They should have stayed more consistent. They really focused on making the backgrounds look pretty, while they should have been making Pokemon look more detailed too. When looking inside Pokemon's mouths, there's no detail. Same with claws, for example. I'm more neutral about the change, but I think they should stick with the style showcased in Pokemon in the movie I Choose You. I think that is their sweet spot. Number 23. Pokemon Mewtwo Returns. One star. I feel like if I was a clone and I knew it, I would be uncomfortable in my body. I'm just like Misty for real because I also hate bugs and love water. I love Domino and her cute fangirl personality and sassy side. I approve of the message of preserving nature and the healthy effects untouched land has on wildlife. I would travel so far to be dunked into that healing spring water. It should clear up all the mental shit I got going on. I feel like this contains way too complex of a subject matter for such a young target demographic. Pokemon movies never need this much existentialism. Jesse, why are you flirting with someone else right in front of your man? At the end, everybody comes to a consensus that everyone deserves their memory even if it's unpleasant. They should know what they are and where they came from. 
Man, if I could erase large chunks of my memory, I would. Sometimes it truly is better to not know things. Ignorance is bliss. This felt like it had no reason to be made. It doesn't f even feel like other Pokemon movies to a certain extent. This is one of the laziest ones. Number 22, Pokemon. The Mastermind of Mirage Pokemon, one star. I like Misty more than May, so I liked her coming back. It was cool that the two of them bonded. I liked the d villain design, but you know me, slap a mask on anyone and I'm sold. The idea of a corrupt professor is awesome. We haven't seen that done before or since in the Pokemon universe. This is a good one if you enjoy watching the battles. When Mew started disappearing, the audio that came back into my head was, do you really think, do you really think that I give a fuck, do you? This film doesn't even make sense. Not due to lack of knowledge on my part, but due to contradictions that happen within the film. Number 21, Pokemon the movie, Hoopa and the Clash of Ages, one star. Hoopa bong, that's all. I love shiny Rayquaza making an appearance, such a cool design. Donut shaped Pokepuffs, hell yeah. I like the use of portals. Pikachu did not just disintegrate a building. I don't like how this mostly just became a huge fight between legendaries in the end. Did Ash really just tell Rayquaza what to do among a bunch of other legendaries? Boy, if you don't shut up. This one fell so flat. Most of the characters didn't have any of their personality. The only time I caught a glimpse was when Clement made a new invention. Number 20, Pokemon Ranger and the Temple of the Sea, one star. I go for the role of Chaser every time. Damn, okay Phantom, we get it, you tub. For those of you giving this one a high score, I know what you are. You're doing it for that little twink Jackie. You can't fool me. The dad is so much sexier. Dilf supremacy. This one has Catboy James, so I'll take what I can get. I really like Manaphy as a Pokemon. My first Pokemon game was Mystery Dungeons Explorers of Sky, and he had a decent role in there. He's a little cutie. Unless I'm remembering wrong, I remember crying at the end of his section in the game. Wouldn't be the first time that game made me cry, looking at you, Armaldo. I like the nature conservation message behind the film. This definitely had the weirdest opening narration I've listened to so far. The narrator states that you can attempt to count the Pokemon, but it would be the equivalent of counting every grain of sand at the beach? What? There were only a few hundred Pokemon species discovered at this time, it's nothing crazy. I can count to 400 or whatever. It's also very vague and all-encompassing, adding or not to the end of random sentences. The narrator seems to think we're all idiotic children who can't count very high, but still uses more complex words every once in a while that children wouldn't have come across yet. The voice actor sounds like he's trying to hold in a laugh at how bad this script is. At one point, Meowth says James has blue hair when it's clearly purple. I didn't really like the body swap element here. One of the tropes I liked the least. I really didn't like them pushing the role of mother onto May. You can't say they didn't either because she showed more care for Manaphy than most of the mothers in this series care for their human children. She herself is a child and shouldn't have to deal with that just yet. This had some glaring pacing issues and scenes that should have been cut. I completely forgot about the Phantom after a while until he appeared out of nowhere. Numbers 19 and 18, Pokemon the movie White, Victinian Zekrom, and Pokemon the movie Black, Victinian Reshiram. 1.5 stars. Those macarons looked absolutely delicious. I love pop-up books and collect them, so it was cool seeing it used here. The best scene was the one with Ash and Pikachu climbing all the pillars. Towards the end, they would crumble with every step. That was so cool. The Pokemon company really thought they could do the same thing they do with the video games and release two versions. It was proven ineffective, obviously, because they never did it again. You already know I'm not about to watch both versions of this for very minor differences. I watched a black version. Watching the entirety of the Pokemon films is already similar enough as it is. Imagine if they kept that up though, there'd be even more Pokemon films when there's already a very long lineup. Personally, I don't even bother buying both versions of the games. I'll just pick the one that has better characters or Pokemon. For example, I chose Shield for Avery. I want him. Fine as hell. Victini's body kind of looks like a ball sack. 
It was such an asshole move of Victini to sit there watching his friends think he's died and do nothing. He didn't reveal himself until macarons were brought out. Victini is chasing the bag for real. Number 18. Pokemon Arceus and the Jewel of Life. 2.5 stars. Dialga is such a cool Pokemon. I'm a fan. Nice legendary roundup. The one-off characters were good this time around. Art style really got upgraded for this one. A man from the past saying, let's hear what this woman has to say. Pokemon really solved sexism. This one's the end. Sexism. I feel like Ash had no business in such a tremendous event in the universe. Why is this random 10 year old pleading with God? Number 16. Pokemon Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. 2.5 stars. I like the visual representation of Trico scaling the wall. May's dress looks amazing. I love how some of the Pokemon have toe beans. So cute. I never noticed Meowth had them. I really like the new characters on this one and the backstory, but everything else is lackluster. I remember this being better than it actually was. I don't know what's up with this series and shitty CGI. Why is Ash throwing hands with a Lucario? Can Lucario eat chocolate? I feel like no. Just feed him a berry or something. Then again, imagine an episode where a Pokemon is hospitalized at the Pokemon Center from eating too much human food. Number 15. Pokemon Heroes. 3 stars. I really like the scene in the opening that tells the backstory. The art style is really cool for that segment. Annie is the pretty girlfriend and Oakley is the smart girlfriend. I liked the use of CGI here, they did it well. When they were using it to navigate the city corridors, for example. Not so much for the machines. I love the grandfather's character design, making gondolas seem like such a cool job. The town is very beautiful. I'm very impressed they actually killed Latios without resurrecting him. It's a very mature choice and kids need to learn about loss. Otherwise, they're just gonna think Graham Graham will come back through the power of friendship. The ending for this really threw me off, even as a kid. Did Ash really need a love interest here with Latias, a Pokemon? Number 14. Pokemon the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back. Three stars. Aw, baby Mewtwo is so cute. I love Pokemon who have the ability to speak. It gives them so much more depth. I'm just gonna say this once, and it might as well be jotted down during the first film. Jesse and James are one hell of a power couple. As someone who's femme for femme, I love seeing these type of re relationships in media. I thought this had some more advanced concepts, such as the idea of man-made Pokemon, existentialism, nature versus nurture, among other things, are just what came to my head. I'm surprised Mewtwo joined forces with Giovanni. It seems uncharacteristic, like he would know better. The power of friendship saving Ash in the end... <sighs> Children need to understand that actions have consequences, and the power of friendship can't simply undo your actions. The memory erasing aspect in this... The memory erasing aspect in the end made this irrelevant for the characters involved. They might as well have not been there to begin with, and honestly, their side of the story is what slowed down the film and made it not as good. Number 13, Pokemon Forever, 3 stars. I really like the time traveling aspect here. The sketchbook of Pokemon was so cute. I really liked Deanna and her grandmother's design and house in the forest. Did I cry a little when Celebi died and all the Pokemon were mourning their loss? A little, yeah. Only a little, though. Of course I knew Celebi wouldn't really die, the Pokemon company doesn't have the balls for that. I was dead as fuck when Celebi caught Ash and Pikachu mid-air, but let the villain fall to his death. I think I would have been tempted to stay in the future if I had the chance to return, especially if I had a new love interest. Young Professor Oak has a Ramona Flowers ass haircut. To be honest, I'd be pissed if Celebi kept me trapped in a forest where time stands still for 40 years. Everyone would have moved on without me and I'd be left in the dark. This had some really bad CGI. Number 12, Pokemon the Movie, Volcanion, and The Mechanical Marvel, 3.5 stars. I like the first song, it has a nice vibe. Not good enough to add to my playlist, that's for sure, but still one of the best songs I've heard in this series. Ash wears a waist trainer in this one. I actually like the relationship between the two legendaries here. I love their huge differences in protective instinct. I thought Ash's new outfit was a positive change. 
He must have struggled with his waist trainer on, though. I'm glad Ash was finally told off for being annoying. He needed to hear it, but sadly he didn't take it to heart and continued being annoying. Sylveon is in this, which makes me very happy. My favorite Pokemon. I love Sylveon so much. I always love seeing Pokepuffs. I want to eat them so bad. I really love how they talk about some Pokemon have suffered abuse. Kind of weird to just now bring it up considering trainers make their mons fight each other. But kids can learn from this and understand why maybe a dog or a cat can be apprehensive around them. This one had the weakest opening scene of all the Pokemon films I've seen so far. That's not a good sign as those are usually the best scenes in the whole movie. This legendary has one ugly ass design. I haven't seen it until now. I don't like how mechanical everything is in this one. They're trying and failing to go for steampunk. I really could have gone my entire life without seeing Ash inflated. Yikes. Way to cater to all audiences. That legendary Pokemon Bonnie had literally appeared out of nowhere. Number 11, Pokemon Giratina and the Sky Warrior, 3.5 stars. Shaman is an awesome Pokemon. Flower Hedgehog, fuck yeah. Giratina's pretty cool too. I like the setting in this one, specifically the reverse world. The villain was decent. I thought CGI was used correctly this time for the blossoming flowers. The biggest downside in this is that it's been done time and time again. It just doesn't end with the Pokemon company. They'll make the same movie over and over every year. It's good but so hard to get into this at this point. And this is coming from a Pokemon lover. Number 10. Pokemon the movie I Choose You. 3.5 stars. I like how every few years the animation just gets better and better. This was another turning point and a big one. I quite enjoy it. This really just applies to the humans though. The Pokemon pretty much have the same old animations as always. I really love seeing Pikachu's old sassy attitude again. Replacing Misty and Brock was... a choice. I like Sorrel. He reminds me of Haku from Spirited Away, but feel the opposite way about Verity. I definitely would have preferred Misty instead of her. I always love seeing a Suicune. I thought the scene towards the middle of the film, imagining a normal alternate universe where Pokemon don't exist, had some depth to it. We got to see Ash as a standard anime protagonist of Window Seat in school and all. It's funny when he talks about it later with his friend and Verity says, Wow, that's awful, as if it's not the reality of everyone watching. I like Storrel's backstory. There's been many cases of dogs helping their owners survive in similar ways. But it's really sweet yet heartbreaking. I like how we saw everyone going their own way in the end. It's the first time we've seen companions split up in the films. Every other time, we've seen their slots swapped out and just be like, okay. This is a good movie, but has a lot of flaws. If you're starting off watching this franchise, I recommend you start here though. Not because it's the best the series has to offer, but instead because it's a really good starting point. I remember my 10th birthday, and I definitely wouldn't have been ready to backpack across country solo with a pet or other kids my age. I feel like they should definitely raise the age to 18. Why are these dumbass kids using bubble beam against a goddamn Entei thinking it will do shit? Especially after seeing how bad he fucked up a higher level slash evolved Pokemon. Did we really need to see a trainer full on kick a Charmander? Really? They would have got the message across with the trainer simply nudging Charmander off his leg and yelling at him. I think that was too much. It was odd that Verity officiated a battle between her friend and a stranger when there were so many other people around who had no personal stakes in the outcome. I think it was pretty pathetic to make Verity's mother look identical to Cynthia, yet during interviews creators vehemently deny that Cynthia is Verity's mom. They really thought that would make a big difference in ticket sales, sacrificing common sense for a few extra hundred bucks because some people will go to see it just because they think Cynthia's in it. How desperate. It was bold as fuck of Sorrel to say Ash is the exact same as someone who actively abuses his Pokemon simply because he's upset he lost the battle. Note, he didn't attack his Pokemon out of anger because he lost, he was simply feeling down because of the loss and complained about it to his friends. That's not same in the slightest. I wouldn't be friends with Sorrel after that. 
I think it's offensive that they recolored a Butterfree pink to be Ash's Butterfree's lover. That's not the shiny variation coloring either. They just made that specific Butterfree pink to say, Hey guys, this specific Butterfree is pink, so everyone knows that this Butterfree is a girl Pokemon instead of a boy. Butterfree isn't a boy, got it? Ash's Butterfree would never do a courtship dance with another male of the same species. It's the only pink Butterfree in the flock, too. Are we to assume all the other ones are all male? Really, the only difference between the genders is how their wings look. Female Butterfree have more black in their wings. They're not straight up pink. Does anyone remember the viral clip of someone in a movie theater film the, filming the screen and Pikachu starts speaking and the crowd is audibly taken back and disgusted? such a bad decision. When will Pokemon finally have the balls to kill off Ash? Stop faking it because we know you're never gonna do it. This series is starting to feel like One Piece and I don't even watch the series, just the films. I've seen some of the anime as a child but still. I thought the old man character being thrown in at the end was unnecessary. He was too much of a last minute decision to give him any depth. Number 9. Pokemon Zorak Master of Illusions, 3.5 stars. This was one of my favorites growing up. Zora and Zoroark are so cute. I love when animals have cute little dot eyebrows. Definitely some of my favorite Pokemon top tier. Out of all Pokemon with transforming abilities, Zora is my favorite. When he transforms, he has a goofy little smile. And when he transforms into a human, he keeps some of his natural qualities like his tail. Did you guys know that there's a theory that N from Black and White is a Zorark? If you ever see someone with an animal's tail in public, I don't recommend grabbing it. <laughs> the shiny versions of the Legendary Beast looks extremely similar to the normal versions. I think the whole taking a bullet for someone thing is so annoying. If they have to choose themselves or someone else as one thing, but if you have time to jump in front of someone, you have time to push them out of the way as well. This one wasn't as good as I remember it being. Number 8. Pokemon The Rise of Darkrai. 3.5 stars. Alice looks exactly like what I imagine a human version of Isabel from Animal Crossing would be. Brock having a little blue book of babes and showing them to women he wants to get with is funny, but then I remember I have a 100 plus slide simple list on Google Slides that is completely finished and up to date. I'm laughing at myself. At least I don't think I'd show it to a character if they were real, like, you're number 47 in my simplest. <laughs> I really enjoy the misunderstood baddie trope. It's one of my favorites. I like that they did something different this time. Darkrai has a cool design, and it's one of the cooler legendaries for sure. Good cast this time around. The shitty ass CGI brick falling on a character's head. Why is it that sometimes a character will say something and then another character will say the exact same thing immediately after and add nothing to it? Not even a question or confirmation that they heard it right, they just repeat it. Number 7. Pokemon Jirachi Wishmaker. 4 stars. I love carnivals. It was cool seeing all the Pokemon shaped rides. Pikachu eating popcorn is so cute. I'm jealous of that amethyst cluster. Butler and Diane are so fine. I want either of them. Jirachi looks so cute wrapped up sleeping. I wish Jirachi would summon lots of candy for me. All of Jirachi's interactions are so cute. This one has definitely the best or second best script out of all of them. I like the Groudon design. This is the one that made me a Max hater. He was okay in other films, but here he's bad. I hate how rough Ash and friends get with Jirachi demanding wishes. Jirachi is literally baby shaped. They shouldn't be aggressive with him. Number 6. Pokemon Destiny Deoxys. 4 stars. This was one of the Pokemon films I liked the most growing up as a kid. I think Rayquaza is way cooler than Deoxys. Good on Munchlax for picking up litter. I like how they portrayed PTSD here. 
This was probably my first instance of seeing a kid who's gone through traumatic events like me when I was young, so I really latched onto this for that reason. It was so sweet that Deoxys changed forms while around Tori, so he wouldn't be intimidated by him being a Pokemon. They went for a very 3D route with this one. Bad CGI. There are multiple instances where a Pokemon lunges at the audience and it just shows their not very detailed mouths as all one color. It's just bad. You know, I don't look at my toddler child through binoculars seeing them walk thousands of feet away from me in the opposite direction and simply think it's impossible to keep up with him. Ma'am, get your child. This is child neglect. The music in this one is noticeably bad. Number 5. Pokemon Detective Pikachu, 4.5 stars. I love seeing so many Pokemon brought to life. I explode when I'm stressed too, Psyduck. I think his partner should put some calming baby sensory YouTube videos on for him. Slime ASMR works too. I'm very surprised with the direction they went with this. Pokemon has tried so desperately to sanitize their product to make it more appealing for children, yet here they are with a dark and gritty movie that includes an illegal underground dog fighting esque ring with Pokemon as the fighters, among other things. I love the neon lights of the city. Tim said he's still got it thinking he caught Cubone despite clearly never catching a Pokemon before. His best friend was in the beginning and then never again mentioned after that. I love Ryan Reynolds as an actor, but I don't think he was the right choice for Detective Pikachu. I think an older actor with more of a gruff voice would have been a better fit. Why do so many movies insist on ham-fisting a heterosexual relationship with zero chemistry into the film? There was no need. The best route for a Pokemon film is to take the focus on the actual Pokemon as much as they possibly be can. Because I honestly couldn't care less about the humans in this. I didn't see the twist coming, but that's not a good thing. Pikachu should have been a father figure to Tim, but he simply wasn't. I wish there was more diversity of Pokemon, we got a lot of repeats. Number 4. Pokemon the Movie, Diancy and the Cocoon of Destruction, 4.5 stars. Diancie is a really cool legendary, one of my favorites. Mega Diancie is even better. Xerneas is another great one too. This has been, and probably will be even after finishing all the movies, my favorite legendary duo. I thought it was really cool how after the intro we got to see Pokédex entries too. At least partly. I want to eat the Pokepuffs. All the food in this looks absolutely delicious. The chocolates! I had to eat as soon as I finished this film. I want to go shopping at the mall with Diancy as my companion. As a matter of fact, I think if I could choose one Pokemon to be my partner Pokemon, it would be Diancy. She's super cute and stylish and could buy me all sorts of things. I actually like Clement as a companion. His inventions are quite useful to the plot. His little sister, however, is a different story. I hate the overbearing sibling trope. Sadly, they're a package deal. I really love the relationship between the two thieves, so cute. The guy proposing in the end, aww. Sadly, this does have some minor flaws. The use of CGI was unnecessary. It looked fine for the pink diamonds, but Xerneas? No. I didn't enjoy the twist of the grass-type trainer being the villain. The ending was very abrupt. Number 3. Pokemon the movie The Power of Us, 4.5 stars. I think I found my favorite Pokemon girl. Risa is so stylish. I love her hair. She looks like an idol. I wish she had more of the focus though. I'm surprised her Eevee never evolved into a Sylveon. I thought that was the direction they were going with that. This has one of the best side characters. Margot is very adorable and her pink hair adds to her charm. I like feeding stray animals too. I like Torn a lot, he reminds me of N. He's just like me for real, having mental breakdowns in public. I want him. I enjoy seeing the uncle trying to impress his niece, hanging out and furthering their relationship. This impresses me because sadly men have set the bar below floor level when it comes to their relationships and being active in children's lives. The candy apples look so delicious. During Zorora's backstory, it is revealed they trust humans less and less over time due to their actions. That's about where I am with men right now, I'm not gonna lie. It's so cute whenever a trainer is about to catch their Pokemon and the Pokemon wants to be caught, so they just gently press the Pokeball against the mon's head. So cute. 
Pokemon seem to go from 0 to 100 at times. They'll continue to do fake out deaths time and time again, yet in this film a Teddy Ursa burns to death? That's literally the most painful way to die, poor little bear. Again, I like the upgraded animation here, but I don't like how childish and moe they're making the characters. I noticed this especially with Ash. The rabbit teeth and eye size and placement that makes it look like you have genetic issues isn't my thing. I'm not a fan of the changes made to Team Rocket's outfits. Downgrade. They still don't even bother to give Meowth an outfit? Lame. This had a lot of great character designs, but that just makes me even more pissed off that the Pokemon company will do anything but draw a dark skin character. Pokemon try to make a black character any shade other than the lightest? Impossible. I've also noticed that throughout the films and games, they can't help themselves but change Brock's skin color damn near every time. They continue to whitewash him as recently as 2019. Come on now. I was shocked that the rare Pokemon they had building up during the first arc was simply an Eevee. Talk about underwhelming. The villains did not just try to kidnap the young girl. What the fuck? Why did they have Risa running around with no shoes at one point? The biggest flaw this film has is that we meet Risa's brother in the opening scene and never see him again. So odd, they completely forgot about him. Number 2. Pokemon the Movie Secrets of the Jungle, 4.5 stars. It was so cute when Coco and Ash were getting to know each other and held hands. This one is genuinely so cute, I'm not even gonna lie. You wanna know the best part? Ash takes a back seat in this one. He almost He's almost irrelevant and takes up very little screen time. Honestly, he didn't even really need to be in this one at all. I love the story of family. Please stop with the buck teeth though. Number 1. Pokemon 3 The Movie 5 stars The ponytail rocking horse is so cute. I love seeing the father-daughter bonding. It was so sweet whenever Entai slash her father encouraged her, saying things like she can become anything she wants to. Charizard saving Ash and Pikachu was awesome. If I had access to that dream world, complete with substitute Barrett's, you bet I'm never leaving. What did you think of my list? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you want to read my full reviews, check out my letterbox list linked. I'm also interested in your ranking, so be sure to list them, or even just your favorite and why you like it. Leave a like and subscribe and hit the bell for more rankings as well as other content. If you'd like to support my content financially, please consider becoming a patron. I have tiers starting as low as $2 a month. Check out the list in the description for more info on exclusive perks. Until next time, mwah!